Some say that the more you know, the more you know you don't know. But just the fact that there's always more to know, and the more that you know, the more you realize there's more to know, probably says that better. Like if you don't know anything, I don't know, I guess everybody knows something. But starting with the foundation that everything we know is wrong is usually a good place to start. I'm not saying it's a good place to hang out for long because you feel dumb and angry and lied to by everyone. So I have this theory that kind of makes sense. Um, this is a blog. Mead villcolin.blogspot.com um, The headline is Spartacus and Jesus Christ What do they have in common? If you google that you'll, pro and Mead, you'll probably find Meadville calling and you can read this so I'm going to read a bit of this and maybe all of it it's not long and share why I think Jesus was Spartacus I know the timelines aren't perfect, but if you study history long enough, you realize the timelines are so far from perfect in every way. Like sometime between 100 BC and 50 AD, this happened. But we're not sure. You know, who, do you, who do you trust? So here's what the blog says. Finally, a story told the right way. I don't usually like remakes, but this one really got my attention. The story flows, and it holds true to the legend, believe it or not, that there really was a slave by the name Spartacus who was a gladiator and led a massive slave revolt that almost toppled the Roman Empire. That is why he, his family, and his captains were crucified at the end. <clears throat> they had to make an example of him to prevent anyone else getting the idea of rebelling or trying to overthrow the empire. Romans were some of the most brutal people that ever lived on this earth. They subjugated 80% of the Mediterranean world, and they do, did so by way of guile, war, terrorism, and money. Sounds like nothing's changed on Earth since then, huh? <clears throat> but I must say, every <clears throat> culture is brutal. Some people think that the cru that crucifixion was reserved for people like Jesus of Nazareth, when actually it was a brutal punishment reserved for political prisoners who Rome needed to make an example of. This is why the mere fact that this individual and Christ were both crucified shows that the problems caused by Jesus were significant enough to be mentioned by Josephus and the Chronicle of Palestine. The primary crime that Jesus committed was, in the eyes of the Roman world, equivalent to the crimes committed by Spartacus. Jesus was encouraging his followers to overthrow the powers that be and try to start a new world order. A new order. What I find fascinating is that is the fact that both of their stories have outlived the Roman Empire and Jesus eventually, through his followers, changed the Roman Empire and arguably the history of man kind by triggering the creation of two of the world's great religions. And then he says he was there was a spell checker and he's a oh and he's not an illiterate moron, but he does spell at the eighth grade level. And we won't even talk about his lack of math skills. I can relate with him there. On both of that. So in Spartacus, the movie, the series on HBO, I might watch it again just to find that. Plus, I like the show. But there's a spot where uh, they're crucifying someone. 
and Spartacus is walking through the town with somebody and they're stoning this this woman to death. I don't know why. What their reasoning was. <clears throat> she was a supporter of Spartacus, I think. So Spartacus takes the stone and and throws it and hits her in the head and kills her. And you would say, oh, Jesus wouldn't do that. But remember what he did say? He said, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. He couldn't stop the angry mob from being the angry mob. And if he could have, he, he didn't. Matter of fact, he probably led the angriest mob in the world at times. Both of them did. So, anyway, so when Jesus said, let him without sin cast the first stone, he said, I'm going to throw the first stone, and I'm going to kill this person so that you guys can't torture them because you're a bunch of savages. And that is exactly a scene in Spartacus. Plus, there's the 18 years in the, the wilderness, which people interpret as being a wilderness. But wilderness, I don't know where it says that in the Bible. There's just 18 years, nobody knows where he was, apparently. And if they do, they aren't saying that he was at war. Because the, the idea of him being a hippie you know, not a, not a, one of those crazy hippies, but like a chill, meditating hippie who was a pacifist makes it easier to control the people who think they are followers of Jesus. But when I ask people what did Jesus actually do, those who when those who will even answer, they say he flipped over the table. I was going to get his crown or, or die. He was entitled to and okay with either, apparently, at that point. So, um, yeah, so one saying, missing 18 years, a scene from a fictional movie. The thing about movies. I was just talking with a friend about movies, and I, I don't know when, but I think that I know, I know, whether I'm right or wrong, you know, history can decide, but I know that a lot of what's on our televisions and, uh, you know, documentaries just appear. Like, some of them are just too good. They're too honest for humans to have made them. Uh, I think that'll probably become evident and relevant as disclosure goes onwards that humans aren't in control. You know, God's in control. And even that concept of God being in control is something that I think God, the gods are just forever in tumultuous debate regarding. Um, at one point in the Bible, I don't know where, if I'm wrong, tell me. At one point, he meets uh, the God of, you know, whoever, the Jews, I guess, at the time, and says, that's not my Father in heaven, that's not God. But I think what he really said was, that's not my mother in heaven, that's not God. See, because you can look up the queen of heaven, and you can find information, Asherah. And only by looking up Asherah, basically, can you find a king of heaven. You can find all kinds of names for God, and no goddess in sight. You can look up the names of all kinds of women, and, and only find information about their husbands. These are facts. You ready? Something I've spent a good amount of time doing. So, yeah, what a concept that would have been. 
so he he's raised to be a rabbi. He's full of piss and vinegar and wants a good fight. Maybe he sells himself into slavery on purpose or accidentally or maybe he's tricked. Is that possible? Why not? Because you say God, God's infallible, but where do we see infallibility represented by any of his any of the teachings which correlate or relate with God. I think I found one which is the strongest bit and it's not even relevant to any, like much. To, to me it is, but to most people they'd be like this This is not important. There's the gates the, the eight how many gates and revelations or walls, whatever. And there's the, the story of Anana going to the underworld with Arishkagal. And uh, she has to shed some of her clothing because she has to arrive naked for judgment by the nine lords of the underworld, whoever they are. And I don't think they're reasonable. And even if I have to face them one day, I want to be clear now, I already don't think they're reasonable. But I know Anana wanted to be the Lord, ruler of everything. And that's difficult to do. And what it was called was the mess. M-E-S. It was everything that was great and equated with everything that was not great or that was terrible like laws and crime go together like peanut butter and jelly um, prostitution or rape you know if you don't have prostitution organized you're more likely to have rape especially since some religions weaponize it against women and children and it's a total Disgraceful disaster I'm not going to get into right now because I'm weak right now. <clears throat> um, so, Anana had consolidated a lot of power and uh, too much, though. I mean, when you the more cons the more power you have, the more you're spread thin. If you don't build an infrastructure of people to carry out your wishes. And what's that word? There's a word I really like. Um, where you give people <clears throat> responsibilities. I can't think of the word. Anyway, I'll remember it at some point. Not designate. So, but Inanna's God's daughter, and there's a book called called God's Daughter. Now, before that, you know, I mean, it's this ridiculous circle of, you know, God, goddess, God, goddess. It's like the chicken or the egg question, and. There's no right answer. That's why we end up all the way back at the Ogdodes, the four frog men and the, and the snake women. Back in the beginning, back in the beginning-ish, I mean, the fact that ultimately Someday we'll find out the origin story of, of everything. And if we do, with sincerity, it's not going to, it's no matter what, whether you're thinking science, I'm thinking science too. It's going to be some scientific discovery that's going to rock the world. I don't think that's going to hold the answer. 
but I don't think I don't but I don't think it's gonna be any more or less correct than uh, a really strange myth with a boat and these eight Ogdodes swinging back and forth in the sky or something like that. I think it would really mess up a lot of people's perceptions if they... Well, some people seem aware that Jesus was probably like a wolf king more than like a king of the sheep. But these same people would probably say that humans are more like goats or wolves than sheep to begin with. And let's face it, the sheep are everyone but you, right? <laughs> you and you and your people, you know, you're the strong ones, and everyone else is sheep for not believing you. But really, I don't know who's gonna be the, the who's gonna be the good shepherd. You know, they want a they want a wolf king. They want someone more ferocious and horrible than than him. I'm not even for us. He's, he's, just, he's just an abomination. So, yeah. I offer no proof of my theory. But I think that that... <sighs> oh, yeah. So, at the point about documentaries and movies being made with perhaps increasing accuracy, I attribute to uh, the, the evolution of consciousness and awareness of past lives and the, the Schumann resonance and technology that's also indistinguishable from magic or religious um, occurrences which are indistinguishable from technology you know like there was this dude one time who I met I think he was I think he was an agency or something he had this box and he said he said here open this box everything you want is in this box my mentor who I trusted Mark was there and this dude, who I'd seen around increasingly, was there too. And, I mean, I've seen a lot of occult mockery in my day. I've seen a lot of it. Like, too much. Like, to the point where I, sometimes I think they're mocking because they don't understand. So they just want to, like, be like, oh, if we make fun of him, then, you know, he'll be as confused as we are when the point should be that together we're trying to peel back the veils of confusion and find the truth. And yeah, there may be many truths about many different aspects of time, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't try on each event to find something that resembles making sense with the truth. Um, yeah, so the box. He shows me this box. And, yeah, he says, everything he wants in this box. Now, he was kind of mysterious on the, on the fringes of my life, which has always been different, I think. Different enough. So, I, I said, no, I was like, no, I'm all set. And I thought about that on and off for the last 12 years or so since then. First of all, the box was empty. Second of all, I didn't want anything. But the point wasn't that it was empty. The point was that I didn't want anything. 
No, maybe I would have opened it and there would have been a, <clears throat> I don't know, a hundred dollars. Who doesn't want a hundred dollars? I don't think there was anything in there, and I don't, that's, that's how I think about it, and I think it was accurate. I didn't want anything. And that's also a problem. You don't want anything. If you don't want, you can't buy a man who doesn't have a price. <clears throat> but if you can't buy him, you also can't pay him. What are you going to pay him? So, I figure he was a. I figure. Jesus was probably trained like, kind of like Braveheart, multilingual, traveled with his father, partially as an assistant, partially as a, I don't want to say assassin or warlord, but someone looking for people <clears throat> who would raise up against whatever and what but when I say whatever I mean I don't know what the hell what was there to rise up against Rome the tyranny of the money traders and the synagogues there's tyranny everywhere it's like the movie Street Kings where a uh, forest worker character at the end says we're all the, we're all the bad guys and uh, no matter what there's probably someone who's gonna agree with us that we're the bad guys I mean I, you know I'd have to be a fool and a liar to say that there's no reason for anyone to think that I'm the, a bad guy. You know? I've gone out of my way to let me rephrase. <clears throat> <clears throat> People have gone out of their way to, to put me in situations where I had to choose. And it didn't really matter what I choose as long as I eventually... It was about why I chose the why. Because I'm all about the reasons of things. Like, you did that? Why did you do that? You know? I think the reasons are as important as the action. most of the time because a lot of the time there's not going to be any reason or any justification and that's a pretty good indicator that they screwed up and if Jesus hadn't had considerable political power why would they have crucified him But the part about the rock makes sense. It does. There's nothing else like it in any in anything else I've heard of or seen. Except for those two examples, Spartacus and Jesus. So I say, what I always say, but if he had, if they had given him the throne and the crown, he would have been in worse condition than, than he was by being crucified because there was no global internet. <clears throat> 
there was no way for anyone to know why. Why are you doing what you're doing? He would have had no way to tell anybody. He just would have been a warlord going around warring. Like in uh, Game of Thrones. It's the same thing there at the end. Ish, you know, the blonde lady wants to go around the world and, and free everyone. But that means war with the entire world with a, you know, a total war machine. And Jon Snow kills her and goes to the wall and they, you know, they give the throne to somebody else and that area... I mean, and that was the first time they ever even mentioned <clears throat> that there was <coughs> anywhere outside of the Five Kingdoms or whatever the hell they were called. I don't know what they were called. Some of those shows were so bad. Some of the episodes, whole seasons, towards the middle end, didn't translate well. To the big screen. So. You know, I make videos and they're like uh, totally shameless. Like, I talk about my 12-year-old wife like it's nothing. Like, just daring, you know, to give me shit about it, you know? And nobody does. It's not like I forgot about her. It's just a lot's gone on. And I did think she was Mary Magdalene. And when she was here, I did remember some kind of awful times that are somewhere on Twitter. Just terrible times. You can be in so much pain and nobody, nobody knows. You know? Like... I don't know, like this story of the God or the goddess choosing, or the God or goddess, whatever, choosing between their two sons. I assume in this story that one's black and one's white sometimes, and then at other times it's got nothing to do with race or color. I even came up with the idea that since in the time of Cain and Abel, women were property not much better than animals to the people in the Middle East or at least that Cain killed Abel because Abel killed Cain's wife and they had no recourse but killing a man was forbidden when killing a female wasn't See, there's always little mi missing pieces in history. And sometimes those pieces are, like, literally right in front of you. If you do a little bit of research, they're, like, <clears throat> it's just obvious. And then there's the topic, real quick, of Christ consciousness. I can't even, I mean, I should start asking people what Christ consciousness is. Just for my own amusement. You should too, for your own amusement. And see if what they think Christ consciousness is lines up with what Jesus biblically was actually like. Because I say it's not. I say that it's, it's a Luciferian Operation Blue Beam type distraction. That's what I believe. And I don't even necessarily know that I blame them for that because I'm too nice. That's why. Anyway, I know I look like shit. Thanks for telling me.
Have a good day. Talk soon.